Okay, it's uh, Saturday morning. Um, just running up to my local hardware store. I'm going to my hardware store to buy another kerosene heater for the bus. Because the bus, I've got a 23,000 BTU front or kerosene heater that I just got um, in the fall. I've replaced the one we were using before because it was getting kind of old. And that's the one that I, once in a while, I use it in the basement of my house if it gets extremely cold. But this 23,000 BTU does a really good job on the bus. However, because there's no thermostat to turn it on and off, when you light a kerosene heater, they're just on. Um, depending upon the temperature, uh, I'm, this other kerosene heater I'm going to buy, it's half the BTUs and it's half of the size. And I'm going to get that for the bus. For those days where... 23,000 BTUs is way too much and this uh, I think it's actually 10,000 BTUs should be sufficient also because it just kind of dawned on me I wanted you know we try to push camping as deep into the you know we try to do it all year round but when it gets extremely cold uh, the kerosene heater in the bus just isn't enough and I think by getting this other one and having two where I can, this little one will be small enough, I'm going to make a uh, plate that'll uh, kind of hang off of the dash and the bus in the front. And I'll put it up there uh, to help kind of cool that area or warm that area up. Because where we have the kerosene heater now, we started with it in the back. And then we rearranged some things on the bus and we decided to put the kerosene heater in the middle and that works really good. However, the front of the bus gets a little chilly because we have some curtains that we isolate that uh, driver's area off. Plus you got the bus doors and you know they're not 100% sealed so you get some cold air through there. And I think it's a good idea to open the curtains up and heat that area um, with another small little kerosene heater instead of having a cold pocket right next to, you know, what you're trying to heat. Because, you know, we got two weeks to go to New Mexico and it's been, ooh, what, almost a month now we haven't been out on the bus and that just drives me crazy. I, I just get so bored and I just realize like, hey, look, I don't want this, you know, extreme cold weather there to keep us from going anywhere. I mean, we're, we're the kind of people we like to go out for walks. You know, actually, the colder it is, the better, because I don't like to sweat. Um, I love being out in nature. The night gazing of the stars in the wintertime, I find it to be the best. Um, I do love hunkering down, reading a book, you know, and I just love the wintertime as far as that atmosphere, as far as camping. Uh, there's very few people in the woods, so that's just, that's <laughs> gold. Okay, so this is the look at the heater. It's just a small little heater. Like I said, it's about half the size of the, uh, it's about half the size of the big one we got. Um, okay, so that's a look at the heater. I just took it outside after, uh, there's really no assembly required other than there's a uh, piece of styrofoam that comes in the center there. What's cool is there's a glass globe in there. This is all that. It's, it's a glass globe. So it actually gives off quite a bit of light. Uh, that can kind of be a pros and cons. But I just took it outside and filled it up. And you ha should let it sit for at least a good hour. So the wick actually absorbs the fuel. Uh, if you were to light it now, the wick um, would not be completely saturated in fuel. And just wouldn't actually wouldn't even light wouldn't stay lit uh, so this is pretty cool I mean this is a good alternative uh, to what you can you can use propane like if you're going camping or something um, you, you just get this thing will almost burn 8 to 12 hours compared to propane <laughs> um, good luck with that and it's just you know it's just hour for hour you can't beat kerosene over propane um, kerosene is not easy to get at the fuel pump um, some states you actually have to buy it at a hardware store or one of those big box stores. Um, and you pay an arm and a leg for it then. At that point, it's probably not worth it. But when you can get it at a fuel pump like you can here at uh, Pennsylvania, um, or like I said, if you could find off-road diesel, 
You can actually use diesel fuel in this as well. They don't recommend it because it just has a little bit higher sulfur content. But the diesel nowadays is just so much lower in sulfur content. Um, like I said, as I explained earlier, it would just be a little bit harder on the wick. But for the amount of time you're going to use this thing, um, you generally should replace the wick every year regardless how much you use it because anything saturated in fuel when it sits for a long time just doesn't do it well. So um, I wouldn't hesitate to use diesel in it. I mean, I just wouldn't use this in an, you know, an airtight sealed place. But this would be great if you're you know in a tent camping or uh, if you got a little RV or something like that or like what we're going to do with the bus, you know, whether we use it in addition with the big one or just use it on its own. Um, I think for the value, you just can't beat these things. Um, you know, anytime you're using any kind of heating source inside somewhere, you should always have, you know, whether it's your tent, you know, maybe a little opened or something. You should always have some air coming in, you know. But, uh, yeah, so. And I'll do a little, quick little clip once I get it lit later on. Okay, this is a look at the uh, heater. And I got it outside here because I, uh, the initial startup, you got uh, fumes and odor, and then uh, the metals inside actually have a coating of oil on them because they don't know how long this thing's going to sit on the shelf and they don't want it to rust away. But uh, this little guy is pretty cool. I mean, uh, this thing would be perfect in a tent. Yeah, matter of fact, my wife and I were just talking about uh, <laughs> uh, possibly getting a good four-season tent, um, a good canvas tent, because as I said when we were up at the National Forest, uh, there are some awesome spots to take the bus. However, there are even better spots back miles on some of these roads where just people are not going to go back there and camp, but where it would be awesome to uh, go back there and get away from everybody. So we've been doing some research online, and there's a tent company called Kodiak. And our thinking was, uh, we, you know, at our age, I'm not looking for a tent that I have to hunch over, and I don't want to lay on the floor of a tent. Just with my back, I don't like laying on the ground. So we were looking at like a 10 by 12 or a 10 by 14 uh, good canvas tent. Uh, I'm not smoking. That's my breath just from being outside. Um, so that we can stand up and you can do everything in the tent. You can have your table set up for all your cooking. You know, have one side of the tent for the sleeping arrangements. Um, we're talking about maybe doing, uh, getting two cots. Um, and then you put your sleeping bags on there. And then uh, have your totes for some uh, clothing and stuff like that. And then on the other side of the tent, you could have your table and all your cooking stuff there. And then this little guy in the winter, he would just sit in the middle of the tent. And the tent that we're looking at, it has a seven and a half foot height. So this thing would not be worrying about, you know, melting the uh, top of the tent. Of course, it wouldn't melt anyways because... I actually want to get what they, it's a, it's a canvas tent. They're a little more expensive, but they are a much better built tent. They got heavy duty zippers on them. They've got a uh, really good floor in them. And then it comes with a canvas liner. Um, like I said, that's from the Kodiak line. You can look up Kodiak and see what I'm talking about. They're actually called cabin tents. They're not like your typical little small tents. These are like, you know, you can stand up. So we're looking at like getting a, six or eight person tent for just two people but we want everything contained inside the cooking and everything especially if we're talking about camping in uh, the winter um you know these tents are uh built for the extreme cold weather and uh i know what you're thinking like well wow you got that bus and all that but you know sometimes you just uh like I said, to get back into these tight spots, you know, you need it, a, a four-wheel drive vehicle to get back here. And then you want to keep it basic and simple. And uh, a tent can definitely do that for you. And I think this little heater kind of is what uh, intrigued the idea. I mean, I've always enjoyed, I, jo I used to enjoy tent camping. But once my back and getting older, I don't like laying on the ground. But as my wife was saying, hey, what if we got a 
a big cabin tent and then we did the cots so we're not sleeping on the floor and then put like a heating system in there because like this weekend it's cold we're sitting around the house nothing to do and uh we would have loved to gone camping we contemplated taking the bus out but we've kind of got things situated in the bus for going for new mexico and um yeah so see what happens but that's the little heater this thing was uh, 115 dollars at my local hardware store like i said i could have got it about five dollars cheaper online but i wanted to support my local hardware store so that's it